Hello everyone, welcome to the Situation Corner. My name is Nantanda Sharon and today I'm going to be sitting in for Isaac Wakalanga. Today uh, we are going to be talking about the National Youth Parliament. Young people often need representation. They often need their voices to be heard. And on Friday, a National Youth Parliament was convened at the Parliament of Uganda, where young people expressed their views. They talked about the difficulties that they're facing, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. And today I'm here with Mr. Abaho, who is going to be telling us all about the National Youth Parliament. Welcome, Mr. Abaho. Thank you very much, Sharon. My name is Brighton Abaho. I work with Center for Policy Analysis as a research and policy officer. And uh, today I'm very glad and happy to be part of the situation corner where we are talking about the National Youth Parliament. It is a privilege for me to, to be in areas where I'm speaking about matters of the young people because for a very long time I've always I'm passionate about um, issues affecting the young people, young people being uh, the majority of uh, Uganda's population, not just Uganda's population, but Africa at large. So I believe that uh, young people must, they need spaces, and it is through those spaces that the issues can, can always be raised and then, and then solutions can be found. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. So when you talk about young people having spaces, on Friday you held the National Youth Parliament. Tell us, uh, were there young people out there who do not know about the National Youth Parliament? Tell them, what is the National Youth Parliament? Thank you very much, Sharon. Mm. The National Youth Parliament is, um, is a space that was um, developed by different partners that are passionate about the young people in order to create a safe space where young people can be able to discuss and deliberate on the issues that affect them. The National Youth Parliament started in the year 2018, that is when the first one was held, and uh, in 2020 we were, it was the fourth National Youth Parliament. And um, like I've said, the National Youth Parliament is is always convened under the auspices of the Office of the Speaker of Parliament together with uh, various partners such as um, partners like Farage Africa Foundation, uh, Action Aid, um, European Union, Centre for Policy Analysis, which means the Foundation for Democracy, and other different partners who, are, or who always come from different regions. And um, this year's National Youth Parliament was a very peculiar one, given the fact that it was organized in a way that um, different regional uh, youth parliament sessions were held from the different regions of the country. That is actually what's, what makes it distinct from, uh, from, the youth, from the National Youth Parliament of 2018 and 2019. Because uh, after the outbreak of after the outbreak of COVID in 2020, we are right, we, there was a realization that that you cannot just bring 400 people into one place because there was need to curb the, the spread of COVID-19, and as thus we adopted a way of of conducting or convening regional youth parliaments in the different regions of the country, and and and, and this. And this year we were able to have, uh, to have these region youth parliaments um, conducted in Western Uganda. This one was particularly held in Barara. Um, the other one was conducted, um, was convened in Renzori, in the Renzori region. And this one was specifically convened in Fort Porto, Tourism City. In West Nile, uh, West Nile it was convened uh, particularly in Arua. In northern Uganda, it was convened in, in, in Gulu, and um, in eastern Uganda, it was convened in Bali, and central Uganda, it was convened in Wakiso. Uh, that is how it was for this year. And for this year, uh, uh, the theme was basically about, um, about youth livelihoods, the, qu uh, uh, the quest for uh, youth, li youth livelihoods climate change amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, 
because uh, you realize that after the outbreak of COVID-19, a lot has been happening in regarding the livelihoods of young people. Because uh, when we talk about the livelihoods, we talk about issues to do with earning, issues to do with security, issues to do with health. And this, there has been a shift ever, ever since the outbreak of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why there was, that's why the theme for this year was particularly focusing on the livelihoods of young people and the issue of climate change. Because we believe that, uh, because there has, there, we are increasingly getting challenges with our environment, which, as, which is as a result of the very many, which is as a result as of, of the very many things that we are, or activities that we as human beings are doing in, to, to our environment. And so we realize that if young people are at the center stage of uh, speaking out for, you know, speaking out against climate change, then probably in the years to come, we can have a shift then we can be able to mitigate or avert the challenges that we are having in the country. Thank you. So, Abaho, you've talked about uh, the National Youth Parliament being organized from 2018. What are, from 2018 up to date, what are some of the successes that you've gotten out of the National Youth Parliament that you can say from the National Youth Parliament we have been able to achieve ABCD? Oh. Thank you very much. Um, actually, that is a very incredible question. It is very pertinent to, to, to the reason as to why the National Youth Parliament is always organized. Like I said, the, the first National Youth Parliament was organized in 2018. And um, I must say that from there, 2018, there has been success regarding the issues of young people. Um, since then, since 2018, the young people we're talking about the issue of youth participation in politics. And this is not just participation, but meaningful and active participation in politics. And this has always been in regard to how young people are able to stand or contest for different positions. Uh, like for example, um, in 2018 and 2019, young people are talking about the need for them to, uh, uh, to to have more positions where they can contest. For example, in, um, in the year 2020, the Parliament of Uganda amended the Local Government Act to allow young people below the age of 30 to contest for positions such as chairperson LC3 and, uh, and chairpersons of, of seated divisions. This had, uh, after that amendment, we saw very many young people contest for such a position of chairperson LC3. And I can tell you that as of now, we have very many young people who are occupying these positions. And for us who have been part of the National Youth Parliament, we look at this as a success. The other thing that we, we have seen is in regard to young people. Remember in 2018 and 2019, Young people are talking about the, the issue of labor externalization, which had become a very big problem, which had actually led to, uh, which had issues of trafficking in. Mm -hmm. But uh, after that, after that petition to the office of the speaker, we saw the government of Uganda through the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development coming up with regulations on labor externalization. Even we, we had different partners come up to draft a bill, the Labor Externalization Bill, whose aim was to regulate labor externalization because this was as a result of the many issues that young people who were going to countries such as Qatar were facing. And, 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 and this bill, it is there. We believe that at an opportune time, this bill will, will, be, will be presented in, in, in parliament and probably we shall have, maybe probably pass into law. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing was, um, was economic inclusion of the young people. This actually led to the passing of the Local Content Act. Oh. The Local Content Act is actually speaks to the effect that any investor must make use of the different resources that are in the country rather, rather than using the resources from outside the country. Mm -hmm. And so this clearly means that if, 
if a certain investor is um, is making use of the resources in the country, mm -hmm. then that that means that the young people will, be, will get jobs. Mm -hmm. They will be able to sell their products, mm -hmm. every other thing. Oh, thank you. That is, uh, that's a very good uh, achievement from the National Youth Parliament. So I want to bring you back when you talked about going to the different regions of Uganda, you're going to the west, you're going to the east, you're going to the north. What are some of the issues that young people raised? Given the fact that the theme for this year's youth parliament was on livelihoods, mm -hmm. we realized that there was an issue to do with the livelihoods of young people. This was in regard to the... To the um, remember after the outbreak of COVID-19, mm -hmm. we have had very, bus very many businesses collapse. Mm -hmm. And actually this did not... This wasn't the, the status of the startup businesses, most of which were owned by young people. And I can tell you that many young people lost their businesses. True. And one of the issues that young people were raising was that there is, there is no, um, that they do not have, um, they have not been able to be given a COVID relief fund that can, allevi that can alleviate the businesses that have collapsed. Mm -hmm. You know that m actually most of most young people have have lost jobs, and this has increased the uh, has increased unemployment because mm -hmm. many companies, many entities have had to lay off very many people in order to you know to save on costs and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Then the other issue was in regard to the uh, to the. Um, to the functionality of, of the youth councils. This is an issue that we have always talked about because we all know that the National Youth Council Act, which was established in 1993, mm. is, is, is a body that actually brings together all young people. But it's very, it is very disturbing where you go to different regions and youth leaders in different regions are telling you that youth councils at district and sub county level are not are not operating mm -hmm. actually when we were in uh, in in, in fort porto mm -hmm. one of the youth leaders told us that she has been serving in the youth councils but she has never had any session 2016 2021 they did not have any session of their youth youth council what? and then we ask ourselves what is the use of these youth councils? Mm -hmm. And actually, what they say, they say that the, 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 the biggest problem is in regard to the issue of funding to these youth councils. Mm -hmm. These youth councils are not supported and funded in order for them to carry out their okay. responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Then the other pertinent issue was to do with the escalating teenage pregnancies, which has happened as a result of the continued closure of schools. This is increasingly becoming a very big problem, a very big challenge, not just in not just in one region, but all over the country. Mm. And, 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 and one of the things that young people actually suggested what, was that the government should urgently look at the aspect of having schools safely reopened because young girls are only and only safer when they're in schools than when they're at home. Okay, I, I, I totally agree with you when you talked about uh, young people have not really been given the COVID relief. Most young people have, have been waiting for cannabis banja. But even if uh, that money came through, it would not be able to retrieve their businesses that they have been lost. Yes. So that is a very big issue. Yes, thank you. Uh, if, I, if I may uh, say something about mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, through, through um, Uganda Development Bank, Mm -hmm. The government of Uganda put some money for that can help businesses that were actually struggling. Mm -hmm. But what you need to know is that businesses that were benefiting from money that was put in Uganda Government Bank were the big businesses, mm -hmm. or which can which can only you know uh, which have um, 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 a turnover of 100 million. But if we are to if you are to look at the many of the businesses of the young people, they mm -hmm. are. They, they have a turnover of as small as two to three million. Mm. And then if you, and what you need to know is that many of the young people actually are in these small businesses. This clearly means that these young people are not going to benefit from the money that was they put in Uganda Women's Bank. Mm. Even the different programs such as a yoga that are in place, mm. they cannot easily benefit from them because of issues to do with bureaucracy, uh, issues to do with uh, 
with the, it's, yeah actually some 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 young people from different regions were saying that that money for a myoga has been politicized because they are saying that money is only given to people who align themselves to the rule to the ruling party. national resistance movement party mm -hmm. which actually leaves out very many young people who are who actually support other other political parties and you ask yourself is is the money supposed to benefit a certain group of people who belong to a certain political party or it should be for all young people mm -hmm. thank you uh, the issue of bureaucracy is, uh, and uh, the issue of political parties is a very big issue right now. So uh, I'm just going to ask you, after the National Youth Parliament, after you have given a platform to these young people to come and tell you all these issues that they are facing in their community, after you go to the Parliament of Uganda and discuss, what next? Oh, when, when, when someone here is National Youth Parliament, okay, they go, they discuss their issues, they present them on the floor of Parliament, what next? Thank you very much, Sharon. Yes, um, I, it is very, very important for someone to always ask what next after this has been done. Um, one of the things that is always done is that after the National Youth Parliament, together with the Regional Youth Parliament, has been conducted, the resolutions or the prayers from the different regions and from the national youth party um, the, from the from the region from the different regions are brought and discussed in the national youth parliament and it is through the national youth parliament that you get resolutions that are presented to the different stakeholders including the office of the speaker of parliament including the uganda parliamentary uh, uh, forum on Youth Affairs, which is uh, which brings together all youth MPs to, to, together with the chairperson of the National Youth Council, such that they can form a legislative agenda upon which these national youth MPs or our youth leaders can actually legislate upon, because it it acts as a guide upon which they are going to demand and advocate for the better uh, meant of the youth uh, of, of, of uh, the betterment of, um, of of the youth uh, like provision of, of of those services that we are talking about but mm -hmm. for the youth uh, for the lives of the youth to be made better, better. in one or the other through the different government programs okay. because because we we believe that if these leaders can that the, if these leaders can be able to present these issues to the different uh, stakeholders, that including ministries, department, and, 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 and agencies, then that is, through, that is one way through which they can be incorporated in the different uh, programs of the government. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Abaho. So, just the last question. Uh, from the issues that they discussed, for you as Abaho, what uh, issue do you want to be looked at first, to be sorted out very fast according to what young people presented in the National Youth Parliament? You as a person. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, personally, I, uh, the issue of teenage pregnancies is, mm. is very, 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 very heartbreaking. Mm. Looking at girls of 12, 13 years, mm pregnant you know and with the very many cases that have been reported in hospitals mm. I remember I remember one of the time one of the times when I was in Bududa we went to Bududa uh, uh, host, uh, health center for mm. and one of the cases that was reported was fistula and mm. fistula was one of was as a result of teenage pregnancies and then that means that with the increase of teenage pregnancies, we're, going to, we're also going to see cases of fistula incre increasing among the young girls. And this is very, very sudden. Another thing is that you're going to see these young girls not able to go back to school because, first of all, some of them are going to be married off because of the poor livelihoods mm. and, and probably because of, of how society tends to perceive things. Mm. Uh, it, it is one of the things that I would like the government to put interest on or to concentrate on is on the issue of curbing teenage pregnancies. And this can only be done by urgently looking at safe reopening of schools where young girls can be safer than when they are in their homes. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Abaho.
Thank you very much for uh, joining us today on this show. I'm sure that young people will have to uh, eager to hear more about the National Youth Parliament. So if you want to, how, like, how would they be a part of the National Youth Parliament? If someone is interested, like they have seen this show and they want to be a part of it, how can they be a part of it, the National Youth Parliament? Thank you very much. The National Youth Parliament is always um, convened annually. Mm. And uh, the, the National Youth Parliament 2021 it has been convened. But uh, we believe that young people can always be part of all youth engagements, not just the National Youth Parliament, okay. but all youth engagements which are organized by different partners. That is through working with the different leaders and stakeholders. That is through, if we are able to, to work with uh, the National Youth Council, these young people can continue to have their issues raised through the different platforms that they have, such as the National Youth Council and the District Youth Councils, mm -hmm. and then the other engagements that are organized by different partners. But for the National Youth Parliament, the next one will be organized next year, which I believe young people can, will be able to participate in through, through, um, through you know, applying where a link is provided and expressing the interest to be part of the different engagements that, that shall be in different regions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Young people, there you have it. To be a part of the National Youth Parliament, don't wait for next year. Be a part of the ongoing processes that are happening in different uh, action aid has programs, Faraja Africa Foundation has programs. Be a part of those programs to express how you feel, express your, uh, your issues in your community, down to your sub-counties, down to your regions. Thank you, Abaho, for being part of the Situation Corner. We hope to have you again to talk about uh, more issues of the young people and how they can be involved in the different programs that help them uh, view, put out their views out there. Thank you for watching today's episode of The Situation Corner. Follow us on our different social media platform of Faraja Television. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faraja Television. Thank you and see you next time.